Well, I'm pleased to welcome you here to the Special Collections Library at the University of Michigan Library and to show you some incredibly special things we have. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is a manuscript by Galileo Galilei. He's a very notable scientist, uh, often uh, is credited with inventing the telescope. He didn't really invent it. What he took was um, he took the telescope and greatly improved it so he could see things that no one else could see. And what I'm going to show you first is a manuscript that the University of Michigan owns. This manuscript is just one page is written only on one side, and it is basically um, a piece of scratch paper. But to me, that's really its glory, because it wasn't something that he carefully thought out. It wasn't his finished product. It's really where you can see his mind at work. The manuscript itself is um, divided by a line in the center. That line represents two different times he used this piece of paper. And the first half, the top half of the piece of paper, he used in the summer of 1609. Apparently he had heard um, that there was a man from the Netherlands who was trying to sell a telescope to the Doge of Venice, where he lived. An instrument maker himself, he could certainly build one of those, and so he did. He sat down and he built one. He set in a friend. He did it in one night. It may have taken a little longer than that. But in fact, he did build uh, a telescope that enlarged things at least three times. Um, and then he got better and better. He started making them, and within a few months, he was making them telescopes that could magnify probably 20 to 30 times. But this was back in August. And after he had that first telescope, being um, a man who was a great entrepreneur, he uh, wrote to the Doge of Venice to um, suggest that he could share this with the Doge for a price, of course. This um, piece of paper is where he wrote down his first ideas for that letter to the Doge of Venice. It's his draft ideas, and it starts out with very flowery language to the Doge, I'm your great um, servant, and so on. And then he describes that he had made this spyglass, as he calls it, that could be very useful both for business and for military applications. And says that with this you could see the enemy at sea, for instance, two hours. You could see the sails of their ship two hours before you could without using the telescope, which would give one a great military advantage. So um, after seeing them, you could decide if there were too many to fight and go away before they even knew you were there, or you could stay and engage them in battle. Um, one thing he says in this draft, or that he puts down as an idea in this draft, is that he would keep it a great secret. That changed, and in the final letter, which still exists and is in a library in Venice, um, he instead suggests a public viewing of the telescope, and that's what happened. He had people come in August of 1609 and climb to the top of St. Mark's in Venice and look through his telescope there. And so this was um, some of the, the noblemen in the court. Uh, it was open to them, and they were all very impressed, of course. So he did get a position, um, not just money, but he was granted a position for life at the, um, at the university in Venice. So that was summer of 1609. One of my favorite things about this manuscript, and one that really shows us that Galileo was human, was that this piece of paper apparently just lay around his house for a few months, and then he pulled it out and used it again. So when he pulled it out again, it was January of 1610. And what he used it for then was a very different purpose than writing the letter. In January of 1610, he used this piece of paper to draw together something that was puzzling him. What was puzzling him were some bright objects that he saw around the planet Jupiter. These were visible only through the telescope. No one else had seen them before. And he didn't understand why they were moving in the way they were. In the manuscript, um, he shows on the 7th of January, they looked like this, and he shows that it was a straight line of three things across Jupiter. I think that straight line helped him remember so that when the next night he again came across Jupiter and saw three things on the 8th of January that looked very different, he could remember even without consulting his notes that they were in quite a different configuration than they had been the day before. Now at that point he didn't know 
what they were. If they were background stars, which would be the logical conclusion, um, they shouldn't have been moving that fast. So he didn't know if they were something else entirely, if he had made a mistake. So he didn't even know if he was seeing the same things each night. But he decided to keep track of that little piece of the sky. So he watched Jupiter every night for a week. And here he gathered together what happened during that week from the 7th of January through the 15th. So he goes through the days of the week. The only cloudy night was the 14th when he says it was cloudy. And here's the 15th. Now after that week of observations, this is um, what marks Galileo as a truly modern scientist. This was kind of the difference between theoretical science of the ancients to observational science of the modern times. What he did was to try to make sense of his data. He had data and was trying to use it. And in this corner of the manuscript, what scientists tell us is that Galileo was trying to imagine what these objects would look like if, instead of looking out at Jupiter, as we must do from Earth, if he was looking down on Jupiter. And it was when he took that leap of intellect to try to fit his data into a completely different uh, way of looking at things that he realized the data fit before starry objects were going around Jupiter. This was news. This was huge news. And in fact, in his fuller complete manuscripts in Italy, on the night of January 15, 1610, he switched from writing in Italian, which is what all of this is, to writing in Latin. The reason was not for secrecy, but for publishing. Uh, at that time, the scientific texts were published in Latin. That was the language used by uh, scientists all over Europe. And so he wanted to make sure that he, um, he let other scientists know about this, and he wanted to make sure that he was the first to let them know about this. He didn't really know who else might be out there with their own telescope and their own observations. So he switched in writing, writing in Latin right away. And within two months, he published this small pamphlet, not large at all, but one of the most earth, um, one of the most important books that has ever been published. As may, many people have said, it just uh, it demonstrates many discoveries that Galileo made that are uh, very important to us. Dedicated to the Duke de Medici, the Sidereus Nuncius, he calls the four starry objects that he saw around, uh, around Jupiter. He names them after the Duke de Medici and his three brothers. The date of the dedication is here, it's the fourth of March, 1610. Being in Italy, one important thing that had to happen was that it had to be passed by the censors, the church censors. And so this is the page on which it shows that this was passed by the censors on the 1st of March, 1610. One of the first things that Galileo had to do in this little book is to explain how he was seeing these things. And so he starts out with an explanation of the optics of the telescope. Another very important finding that's shown here are features of the moon, which no one else had seen. On the page here, it starts out a paragraph saying on this last 7th of January. And that's really where he starts discussing what he saw around Jupiter. So he starts out with a diagram of what he saw on the 7th with things making a straight line across Jupiter. And you'll notice that instead of being a diagonal as they are in our manuscript, he's straightened it out uh, to make it much easier to publish. And then on the 8th, he shows them being all on one side, just as they were in the manuscript. Unlike the manuscript, the book goes on after that first week. It goes on for all of the rest of January and for all of February, showing each night where those objects were around Jupiter. By then, his argument could really be conclusive that these objects were not background stars, but were moons going around Jupiter. And this indeed really changed the way we view our universe. And that's why this manuscript, which is part of the process of his thinking, is so important.